<clears throat> going to do quick, two quick examples with you just to make sure you're on the right page and then I'm going to give you my final proper rigorous explanation for why on earth these absolute value signs appear in our mystery integral. Okay, so these first two I reckon you guys can help me with, it's not too dramatic. When you have a look at an integral like this, when you see this fraction, one of the places your brain should now go is, is this in the form f dash on f? Right, because if it is, then I know how to integrate it. The integral of f dash on f is the numerator, the derivative of the denominator. If it's that, you get the log of whatever that function is. Okay, so we're searching for, we've got a new family of functions that we now know how to integrate. If the top is a derivative of the bottom, we're good. But sometimes the top is not quite the derivative of the bottom. You sort of have to twist and turn it a little bit. In this case, what is the derivative of the denominator? Negative 2. The top is not negative 2, but I can make it negative 2 if I introduce the constant out the front. Okay, watch what happens. I'm going to uh, go ahead and make it what I want it to be, negative 2. But in order to compensate for that, I need to multiply by something that turns this 5 into the negative 2 or turns the negative 2 into the 5, same deal, right? So what would I need? Well, there's a minus sign that I introduced, so I'm going to put a minus sign out the front to balance them. We know they'll cancel, yeah? How do I turn this into that? Watch out, be careful. We can test this in a second. I'm going to put 5 over 2. I can quickly check it, right? If I put 2 over 5, I'd get uh, 4 fifths, but I don't want 4 fifths. This is where I came from, right? So you can quickly visually check, oh yeah, I come back to where I started. This is a legitimate equal sign, okay? And now I'm ready to go. That integrand, this guy here, is now f dash on f. Do you see it? So the minus 5 over 2 is there out the front, where it always was. Log of what? The absolute value of 3, sorry, that's too long, um, 3 minus 2x, it's indefinite, so plus c. Happy times, okay? Just for the sake of it, because I know it's easy to confuse, let's just do one more, okay? In this case, it's not f dash on f, but I can make a slight adjustment to make it f dash on f. What am I going to have to do? What, what do I want the numerator to be? I want the numerator to be 6x, so that's not hard to deal with. I'll make it 6x but I will adjust in order to actually restore it to what it was. So I've got to have a 1 over 6 out the front. Are you happy with that? So the 1 out of 6 stays there. I've now got the log function, since this is f dash on f. Don't forget the absolute value signs. Happy times. So we've got just enough time, actually a little bit more, to really give you a proper explanation for this. And it's not as hard as you might think. Okay. I'm going to call you back to one of those first statements we made at the top of today, which is that the derivative of the log function is 1 over x with a restriction. What was the restriction? One more time. x is greater than 0. Okay. Now, I can make an integral statement out of this. I just need to retain that inequality. Right? So the integral of 1 over x dx is equal to log x provided it's just for the positive part. Is that okay? Do you see how I've tried to fix up? Like, just think about one part of it. Whoops. Just think about one part of it. That part does become log x. Do you see which part we're dealing with, right? I know what a hyperbola looks like, but I'm only thinking about this guy. Is that all right? And the integral for this, sure enough, they share the same domain. Thumbs up. Now I'm going to do something a little unusual that maybe you wouldn't expect. I'm now going to try this again, but with a slightly different function. Log of negative x. Hmm. Log of negative x is going to require a chain rule, right? I'm going to get f dash on f, aren't I? What's f dash in this case? It's negative 1. Humor me. What's f? It's minus x, that guy. Now, before you start cancelling, because it's so obvious you're about to cancel, there is a domain restriction on this, just like there was a domain restriction on this. Where did I get this from? Where did that, like, what part of my brain did that come from? 
it came from where I know this guy goes. And it goes that way, to the right, yes? Now think about this guy. What effect does it have to slap a minus sign in front of the x? Y you don't get that side. You get the horizontally reflected other side. You get this. That's log of negative x. So I have a different restriction on this different derivative. Does that make sense? It's not x is greater than 0. It's x is less than 0. Is that OK? Now I'll simplify. And I get 1 over x with the restriction, which is somewhat confusing, because that's the same derivative that I got here, but for a different domain. Does that make sense? So you can differentiate two different functions and end up with the same derivative. Differentiate two different functions, this guy and this guy, and you end up with the same derivative, this guy. Okay? So what I want to try and do is combine this into one statement. Okay? Here's how I'm going to do it. Oops, I need one more thing to round this out. Let's make the um, integral statement that goes with this guy. I've got a new restriction. I'm thinking about, what am I integrating? 1 over x. Where did this go? Where did this um, come from, I should say? Log of negative x plus c. And this makes sense, because look, over on this left-hand side, you get the left-hand integral. Is that OK? So it's a bit weird. Your brain's going to have to do some mental backflip to keep this all together. Okay? But this is the key. Now I'm going to combine it all into one statement. Okay? I'm going to start with the integral of 1 over x dx. Hmm. On the board, there are two spots where I've in written the integral of 1 over x dx, here and here. I'll highlight it for you. And on the other side of the equations for both of these, I have different things. So it's like when you integrate this guy, sometimes you get this, and other times you get this. And they're very different answers. Do you see that? Sometimes you get log of x, sometimes you get log of negative x. So in order to try and capture this, we have language for this. We call them piecemeal functions. You remember this? Like, uh, don't write this down. You can say, hey, I have a function, and sometimes it behaves like this. Right? Let's just make it do that for some domain. And other times it does something completely different for a different domain. Well, this guy does two different things in two different domains. Let's do them one at a time. When x is positive, what does this integral become? Have a look. Just log x. Right? When x is positive, you just get this guy. Okay? When x is negative, you get a whole different answer. Right? It's like it's you know the Hulk or something. He just he's a whole different person when he acts like this. Okay, you get log of negative x plus c. Okay, if only I had some kind of notation that said when you're positive do something and when you're negative do the opposite of that. Wait, we do. That's exactly what the absolute value does. Right? Do you remember that? This is one of the very first definitions back in term one last year. We said. What is the absolute value of x? Well, it's something that does two different things depending on where you are. If x is positive, then this guy is just x, like the absolute value of 5 is just 5. But when x is negative, you do the opposite of that. The absolute value of negative 3 is the opposite of negative 3. It's 3. Okay. So do you need to know this? Do you want to understand why these things appear in this formula that you are writing? For me, it's the difference between you being a mathematician or you being a machine. If you just have rules that you just follow because a piece of paper told you to, then you are a machine. You can be a really good one. Good for you if that is your goal. That is not my goal. I'm trying to make mathematicians out of you, which means you have to know why the rules are what they are. 